6.2 Kelvin, minus 267 degrees Celsius, minus 444.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That's how cold the mirror instrument aboard the James Webb Space Telescope needs to be to function in an optimal way. However, this is not the case with the other three scientific instruments. They don't need that extreme cold. And in fact, they share a different cooling system that doesn't allow for such low temperatures. If you're wondering why this is the case, how the different instruments are cooled, and why they need to be so cold in the first place, it is my goal for this video to answer exactly these questions, so that by the end of it you understand how the chilling temperatures that the instruments support web need allow them to create astonishing images such as this one. So without further ado, Let's begin. We'll begin by answering the question of why the instruments need to be so cold. For one, the infrared detectors inside each scientific instrument, which convert infrared light signals into electrical signals for processing into images, need to be cold to work properly. Furthermore, the optics and scientific instruments also need to be cold to suppress any thermal radiation that could disrupt operations. The James Webb Space Telescope uses two different types of cooling methods. The first one is passive cooling, and this one is effective enough to cool down three out of four scientific instruments, namely the near-infrared spectrograph, the near-infrared camera, and the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph. These three instruments need to be at around minus 236 degrees Celsius to work properly, a temperature that is achievable passively thanks to the extreme cold that deep space offers. However, these chilling temperatures alone wouldn't be enough without the help of a key feature aboard the James Webb Space Telescope, more specifically its gigantic heat shield, which is the size of a tennis court and is capable of shielding off all the heat coming mostly from the sun and the earth, thus allowing the science instruments to cool down passively just by virtue of design. The second cooling method is done actively and it has been specifically designed for cooling down the mid-infrared instrument, which needs to be around 30 degrees Celsius colder than the other three instruments. But why is this the case? Why the difference in temperature between the one instrument and the other ones? Well, this has to do with the type of light that the different instruments are able to detect, and also the type of material that the detectors are made of. The detectors of the other three scientific instruments are able to see both the reddest of visible light as well as near-infrared light, and so they work perfectly at 37 Kelvin, they don't need to be colder to detect those types of wavelengths of light. However, the detectors on the mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, are able to capture mid-infrared light, which are longer wavelengths at lower energy, and typically the longer the wavelength of infrared light, the colder the detector needs to be to detect them, because you don't want to have any remnant of thermal radiation or heat disturb the process of catching that low energy mid-infrared light. As a matter of fact, the heat that the instrument itself generates is enough to interfere with the observations. So that's why you want to cool it down so much that it is unable to detect its own infrared radiation. The material used in these detectors is called arsenic-doped silicon and it works best at just below 7 Kelvin or minus 266 degrees Celsius, in other words, close to absolute zero. And this extreme temperature isn't possible to reach just by using the passive cooling that being in deep space with a tennis court sized sun shield offers. So Miri needs a little help to work properly. And the little help came in form of a super advanced, state of the art cryo cooler developed by Northrop Grumman. And you know, that may sound fancy, but basically this cooling system works very similar to how your fridge at home cools down your food only a little more complicated. But in principle, it's kind of the same process. Moreover, unlike your household refrigerator, this one uses helium gas as a refrigerant because helium has the lowest boiling and melting point of all the known elements, just shy of minus 269 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit colder than what Miri needs, making it the perfect coolant. And here is how it works. The whole cooling system is distributed throughout three different regions in the telescope and you will understand why in a minute. Region 3 is located in the heart of the spacecraft bus on the sun-facing warm side of the observatory and it is in here where the primary piece of the cooling system called the cryocooler compressor assembly 
or CCA for short, is located. This piece is controlled by the Cryocooler Control Electronics Assembly, or CCEA for short, which is also located within the spacecraft bus in Region 3. The compressor assembly consists of a pre-cooler that cools the helium down to about 18 Kelvin, which is still a little bit too hot for its intended purpose. Now, one of the biggest challenges with the compressor was to keep vibration levels at a minimum so that they don't cause shaking in the telescope, which would result in blurry images. Engineers found a way around this problem by building a pre-cooler with a two-cylinder pump that has horizontally opposed pistons, finely balanced and tuned moving in virtually perfect opposition so that vibration is mostly removed. The next crucial part of the cryocooling system is located in region 2 and it is called the cryocooler tower assembly or CTA. Basically it is a pair of gold plated stainless steel tubes of which one of them works as the feed line whereas the other one functions as the return line. Each of them measures about 2 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch in diameter. This pair of gold plated stainless steel tubes that feed and return the cool helium connects to the final piece of the cryocooler in region 1 called the cryocooler cold head assembly or CHA which resides within the integrated science instrument module Within the cryocooler cold head assembly, there is a cylinder inside of which there is a small orifice or hole smaller than 1 mm through which the pre-cooled helium at 18 Kelvin coming from the compressor is further compressed and once it passes through, it expands again and this expansion causes it to cool down even further to the final temperature of a little more than 6 Kelvin. This coldest helium gas then passes through more tubing toward mirrors detectors and this is where it absorbs the target heat resulting in the cooling of mirrors detectors to around 6.2 Kelvin or around minus 267 degrees Celsius. The helium gas is then pumped away and its absorbed heat is dumped away by a radiator. The gas is then recycled and recompressed and the process begins once again. And now to the question of why the different parts of the cryocooling system are separated in different regions. As you may have guessed, this has to do with the excess heat and vibrations that the compressor and the electronics generate. You want all these things as far away from the instrument as possible, so that's why these parts were placed behind the telescope's massive sun shield. Additionally, MIRI also features a thermal shield designed as a last barrier that protects it from excess heat and is critical to achieving the lower temperature needed. And that, my friends, is how the scientific instruments support the James Webb Space Telescope are cooled down, especially the mid-infrared instrument. There are some more technicalities to Mirius cooling system that I decided to leave out, such as the Joule Thomson loop heat exchanger or the acoustic heat exchange, since I'm trying to strike a balance between technicality and making it as understandable for everyone as possible, so I'm really just trying my best here. Anyhow, I hope that my explanation was clear enough even for those of you who are not familiar with this technical jargon. If you have any questions, suggestions or anything you would like to add, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, thank you for being here and watching until the end. I will see you all very soon in the next one. Have a nice day wherever you are. Take care. Bye bye.